In this video, I want to show a feature of Fusion Reactor that a lot of people miss, even experienced Fusion Reactor users. And it's a very important feature, one that it's really a shame because sometimes it's the key to answering problems, and it's the stack trace feature. Now, that sounds scary to some folks, but it's really a very simple concept. It's to say, if a request is running, what's it doing? Hey, Cold Fusion or Rilo or Tomcat, whatever you're using the Fusion Reactor to monitor, what are you doing? What's this request doing at this moment? Down to the line of code. And in fact, I'm going to show you very quickly and simply how you can see that. I'm looking at the demo site of Fusion Reactor. It's literally called demo.fusion-reactor.com. And it's just got some synthetic load that runs all the time. It happens to be a request that runs every minute for 60 seconds. And then it ends and it starts over, runs for 60 seconds, and then it ends. Now, this is not going to be typical in your environment. But let's just say you happen someday to come in here and see this bottom left graph saying, hey, yeah, I've got some requests running. The light blue means requests are running right now. The dark blue refers to average response time of completed requests, but the light blue is requests running. So if you see this going up, it means one or more requests are taking a long time. And you may know that you can come into the requests activity page to view the request that is or those that are running slow. Do that one more time. Okay, so when I come to this page, I see what requests if any are running there might be one there might be many I can see in here how many are running at the moment how many have been running per second if I refresh it I'll see this change I might catch a different one running or I'll see that one taking a longer and longer time well I can look into that request Fusion Reactor lets me see all kinds of details I could see things like if any queries had finished or I might see in the JDBC tab not only that the queries have finished there was one but one is running. Here's a running query. So that's why this request was taken 36 seconds. But let's say I didn't know that was why it was taking a long time. I'm going to refresh it again. And that one's going to end. It's 60 seconds old. It's going to end. Okay, there it is starting up again. Here's where the stack trace comes in. Maybe I don't understand why the request is running slow. So I want to know, why are you at 7 seconds into your life? And if I click on the stack trace button here, that shows me hey what's this request doing right now and I'm gonna look at it real quickly and tell you that I can see that it's running line 25 of this file called GoFusion 9 www.frjdbc2.cfm remember this is a synthetic load so don't worry about the URL it's the file name it's nothing interesting but the point is that's line 25 of that template and if I come up here and refresh this temp the request the stack trace and if it's still running it will tell me it's still on that line of code and I just refreshed it and it is still on that line of code so there's my smoking gun and I'm gonna come back in a moment and tell you how I figured this out and what all this means but finally if I do it one more time it was about uh, 40 seconds into its life 54 seconds so if I rush refresh it now I want you to notice this it's not going to be running anymore and when I refresh it it says the request that was running on this thread has finished okay so if you're stack tracing something and this pops up it means there's nothing more to look at this information down here doesn't mean anything to you just ignore it you have to move on and of course in our case we can go back and look at the request activity and catch another one running it's 30 seconds into its life do a stack trace and sure enough it's on line 25 of frjdbc.cfm now the important thing is to figure out first what the line of code is if any and so you start from the top down and look down this list for anything that says .cfm and often it will jump out to the right because it has this full path to the file and it has this uh, class name uh, in ColdFusion and Rilo you might see this class name if this is a servlet or uh, some other JSP or something you might see the similar concept but anyway the point is you'll see literally the line number of code that it's running now you could go and open up this file if you're on the server that's the actual path to the file name on the server you can open it up and look at it and see what line 25 is in this case but I don't have to do that because the stack trace is like an onion peel this first line is what it was doing at the moment I said tell me what you're doing and sometimes this may not mean anything to you we'll come back to it in a moment below that is well what called that and below that is what called that and so on and so on and so on and I can see within a few lines that it's related to SQL Server and happens to be some cold fusion stuff this is cold fusion 9 so it says macromedia but anyway um, eventually 
I got it pointing to the line of CFML code. Well, the other way to look at it is that this is the line of code that was running, and whatever is above it is what this line of code got turned into. Okay, here's where the rubber really meets the road. So this line of code led to this Java element being called, and this Java element led to this element being called, and so on and so on. And in fact, in ColdFusion particularly, you can figure out what the CFML tag was, or in Rilo, you can figure out what the CFML tag is because it's usually, not always, but usually going to say something like some tag dot do end tag or some tag dot do start tag. If it's a tag that doesn't have a closing tag, the opening tag will execute it when you say run that tag. If it's a, like a CF query tag, between the CF query opening and closing tag is a SQL. When it gets to the end of the CF query tag, it executes the SQL. Okay, so line 25 was the closing CF query tag. And that turned around and executed the query. And that turned around and called another execute method, which called another and another and another. And then you see the JDBC wrapper driver stuff going on. And you don't really usually need to know too much more. Just knowing that that's the line of code that was hung up. We refreshed it. It was still on that line. And then more importantly, that that line, if we looked at it, we'd know what it was. Or we look in here, and usually it's the line above it. That's how you know what's going on in a request. That's a stack trace and it's really powerful. There's also a way to get a stack trace from within crash protection alerts in Fusion Reactor. That's another subject to talk about another time, but there's a quick introduction to using stack traces in Fusion Reactor. Hope that's helpful.